Okay, this video is what happened to Russia. So first of all, Russia has a long history of lots of serfdom and slavery. Like, I forget, it was about 90% of people were either serfs or slaves in Russia around 1860 when America was going through a similar, similar problem. But America had a much lower percentage of slaves, okay? And, you know, I know more about slavery than you think. My Irish ancestors were slaves. You know, Rogers isn't even my real name. That's like my family's slave name. Anyways, but let's get back to Russia. So this is an unequal marriage. The point I'm making with this painting and several others is Russians, the Russian aristocracy, um, and the few people that had a chance to get education produced a lot of good art. They have beautiful paintings and they made great literature. For example, this is the unequal marriage and it's very sad. She's a very poor lady, so she's forced to marry this rich old guy and the real man she loves and who loves her is watching the wedding and he's pissed off, but there's nothing he could do about it. And that's because of the poverty of serfdom. So under the Tsar, uh, there was an excessive amount of serfdom and slavery, and that was bad. Christianity was helping them break out of it, uh, but we'll come to what happened next in a moment. Okay, here is Ivan Ivazowski, and he is one of the greatest uh, painters, artists from Russia. And this is a beautiful painting, Stormy Sea at Night. And you get a sense of hope from the light, like the light for getting out of Plato's cave. Okay, here's another great painting by Ivazowski. This one's called The Ninth Wave. And, you know, they're floating on what is a little bit like a cross, one might say. They're hope for salvation and a better life. And just sort of like there's a joyful playfulness in this art, you know, morning in a pine forest with the bear cubs. What I'm saying here is because if you talk to a lot of people, they will tell you, you know, Russia is just a crap hole. It's a communist you know, piece of crap. It's never been worth anything. I've talked to Eastern European people and they really hate Russia because of Russia, what Russia did to their countries. And they'll tell you, they'll say things to me like, Russians are barbarians, they're evil pieces of crap. They hate their gods, okay? And it's because Russia com committed so much, once it was communist, committed a lot of atrocities against many of these Eastern European countries. I've talked to a lot of people from Eastern Europe. They, they provide the reality of what the Russian Communist Empire was all about. Here's this typical Russian painting from the 1800s, early 1900s, you know. Uh, you know, this one is Holy Russia by Mikhail Nesterov. And there was that real strong sense of Christianity. And that was, you know, what was best about Russia, okay. Here's just another thing, you know, the Easter procession. procession. And, you know, all this Christianity stuff, it, it structures society. It gives you holidays. It gives the people like an organization to their life that encourages good things. It's not perfect. You know, there's always going to be some people that are stupid and jerks, but they're a lot better with it than without it. Okay, here's Cathedral Square in, uh, Square in Moscow, painted in 1802. And one of the things you notice, there's sort of an upbeat joy to the building, okay? And um, I wonder about how accurate this painting is. <coughs> 1802, <clears throat> where are all these lights coming from? They don't look like candles. <laughs> Anyways... Um, I'm making the point that Russia did have some good art, okay? Uh, we're almost done with these. Just another one here, though. The Soul of Russia by Mikhail Nesterov, Russian artist, 1914. And, um, again, Dostoevsky was my favorite writer of this tradition. I'll, I'll talk briefly about the Russian literature. Here we go. Brother Katamatsov is his best book. His other books are okay. The Idiot's good, but it's kind of sad, um, you know, possessed, uh, notes from the underground, his diary, all that stuff. But uh, the Brothers Karamazov was his masterpiece, okay? Um, Anna Karenina, now this is Tolstoy. Tolstoy, you know, I love Fyodor Dostoevsky, who wrote Brothers Karamazov. He's the best writer, one of the greatest novelists to ever live. I agree with Ayn Rand, okay? Uh, she said Victor Hugo's the best, and then uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky. Okay, I actually like Dostoevsky better than Hugo, but they're both magnificent. Okay, anyways... Tolstoy, in my opinion, is a jerk. The more you learn about Tolstoy, the less you will like him. But why is he so famous? And why do so many people uh, celebrate him? Because Tolstoy had what was described as a fundamental accuracy of perception. Post Tolstoy would describe all these different scenes. And it was exactly like you were there. It was like his description was perfect. You, you couldn't describe a situation better than he described it. How people talked and behaved and moved. On the other hand, though, Tolstoy was you know kind of a jerk pessimistic. He sort of thought he was God. I mean, and he, he did a lot of bad things. When you study his personal life, you know, his poor wife and kids, he basically disinherited them um, and gave his money and his books legacy to some business people. It, it was really bad. He did a lot of bad stuff. The more you study Tolstoy, the less you will like him. 
Um, like Ayn Rand says, you know, she can't stand him. And, and, and that's, that's a conclusion a smart person will come to if they study Tolstoy's life. But he still, you know, produced some interesting novels. Let's leave it at that. And there were a lot of other writers, you know, Gogol and other ones. Pushkin was a real entertaining guy. If you study Russian history, you will like Pushkin. Pushkin was funny and clever, and he did a lot of nice things. He got himself in trouble because dating a really pretty woman who was having an affair on him, and then he got in a duel and he died after that, so that was kind of sad and stupid. A man could be really smart in one area and really stupid in another area, like especially academically smart and socially stupid. Uh, not that I'm a member of that club, perhaps. Anyways, here's uh, another painting by a Russian artist, and this is the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, okay? Nice painting, pretty well summarizes that story, but here's what you end up with socialism. It's always like, we're doing this for your own good and you have to do it or we're going to kick your butt, okay? There's always a fist in your face, okay? And you don't want that. And here's what happens to the church. After the communists took over in 1917, they burned down over 48,000 churches. The, the, the clergy, you know, put into slave labor. Most of the people put into slave labor in concentration camps. You know, the only thing the commies build is prisons, all right? Um, and this is part of the Gulag Archipelago, sort of a network of prisons, okay? So Christians build churches, okay, and they make beautiful art and paintings. Commies build prisons, okay, and concentration camps. That's what they do. No good art came from Russia then. Only The only thing worth a crap were the books complaining about communism, like Gulag Archipelago by Alexander Solnitsyn, you know, his other books like A Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich, and um, also books like, um, you know, Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak. And this would be like typical apartments of the, of the people who were able to live in an apartment in Russia. You know, they're just gray, crap hole, bleak, you know, atheism, life has no meaning, just do as you're told or you'll get your butt kicked. You know, I remember that back in the 1980s when I was a wrestler, with you know, hanging around with guys who were world and Olympic champions, you know, they would tell me all these stories about their visits to Russia, competing in the Tbilisi tournament and stuff, and how if a guy was really good Russian wrestler, like, a, you know, a national caliber athlete in Russia, you know, he could get an apartment for that, you know. that was So <clears throat> it was a way to escape out of poverty. That's how poor people were. I mean, they lived terrible. Look at those apartments. They look like animal cages, man. All right, and now here is a picture of a lady from... It's a Russian lady, and this is by Eugenie Balakshin. And the reason I'm showing you this is, this reminds me of my wife, okay? She grew up in Poland when it was communist. And, you know, they're so poor, they didn't have a bathroom. They didn't even have electricity. They had an outhouse, okay? <laughs> you know, while Americans, you know, in the 1970s are living in the so-called modern world with electricity, indoor heat, and all that stuff... They're living, you know, they got an outhouse for a bathroom, okay? Everybody, she said, wanted to go to the United States. It was a land of hope and freedom and prosperity and opportunity. The American dream, okay? You could get some chump to marry you and pay your bills, all right? So, anyways, um, this is kind of what it was like. And uh, she said, you know, when you go into class, you have to salute a picture of Lenin. Um, I uh, also know a whole bunch of other people from Eastern European countries, and they all told me the same thing. It was just evil and brutal. People be arrested for being Christian, fired from their jobs for being Christian. It's a total persecution of Christians. And the reason is communism is evil way to look at life, and it cannot stand the sort of beauty and glory and hope and optimism of Christianity. It doesn't want the people to unite. Remember what religion means, religare, legare, like ligate, to tie together. It brings people together. So communism doesn't want that. Common wants everybody divided, individual, weak, no free speech, all that stuff. Okay. Okay, now the big thing going around these days is the so-called experts on the subject think that USA is potentially going to go to war with Russia. And they think the whole thing is ridiculous. We should be friends with the Russians. Russians should drift back to Christianity. Okay, uh, Russia's not really that much of a challenge to the United States. China is the real country that's challenging the United States. China's got, you know, what, 1.5 billion people. Whereas Russia, with all its abortions and birth control, their population is pretty minimal. I forget exactly what it is. I'll guess off the top of my head, 150 million or something like that. You know, they're not that big of a population in comparison, 10 times smaller than China, approximately. Okay, here's a quote by Ben Franklin. When the constitution of a free society is dissolved, tyranny is erected on its ruins. Okay, here's one uh, quote by G.W. 
When the freedom of speech is taken away, the people are led like sheep, dumb and silent to their slaughter. Okay, so I certainly hope we don't end up in a conflict with Russia. That would be stupid ways. I think the whole Ukrainian current conflict is a is a disgrace. The whole thing is a fake setup. It's just being done to execute the white Christians in uh, Ukraine and therefore take all their land away. Okay, that's the goal of it. You know, when you see that that's what happens, then you can expect that's what it is. And don't be surprised if there ends up being a war between Russia and America. And the goal of it will be to kill off the white Christian men. Because once they're gone, the attitude of the communists, otherwise known as the Democrats, is that there's no one else in the world that has even a remote ballpark chance of stopping them from taking over everything in the world and imposing complete communism on it. Okay? And communism is just modern slavery. That's what it is. If you read it and study, you'll see that's the case. So let's hope that freedom can continue. Let's hope that the things that create freedom, capitalism, laissez-faire capitalism, free capitalism, not rigged, uh, the Constitution, and Christianity. Okay, let's hope they all can continue.